Hey everyone, welcome back to a Tuesday talk with Hannah. I'm Hannah Levin from Heartfelt Wellbeing, and I am excited to share some pretty timely tips today for travel. I know a lot of folks who are in this community are either already doing some traveling or getting ready to travel. And so there are some really simple, basic techniques that you can, or tips and tricks that you can utilize to help you feel happy and healthy as you travel because travel is really fun. And what makes it not fun is if things like we can't sleep happen or constipation happens or we feel totally ungrounded and spacey or our bodies start hurting because we're sitting too much. All sorts of things can happen. And so if we can go into the travel experience with some little tools in our tool belt, we can make it much, much more enjoyable. Now, I know some of you are here live, so say hello. I'm glad to have you all watching live. And if you're watching the replay, let us know you're watching the replay. And I invite you to chime in with your favorite tips and tricks or to ask questions. So if you have some some burning questions about this topic that I don't answer, I'm going to be covering a lot today. Um, if you have some questions that I don't cover, please ask them. There's always more to explore and learn. So hey, Tracy. Hi, Nikki. Um, both of these ladies have been doing a lot of travel, much benefited by their learning in Ayurveda. So um, let's let's dive in. So the first thing that I want to just say in laying the groundwork for understanding how travel affects us and why it affects us the way that it does is from our understanding of the doshas, vada, pitta, and kapha. Oh, Gina says, I'm paying close attention. Excellent. <laughs> um, so we have these energies from the elements in our doshic makeup. So vada is made up of air and space. Pitta is made up of fire and water. Kapha is made up of earth and water. And we're affected by all of these doshas. Now, what's interesting is a lot of us travel more in the summertime, governed by pitta. So it tends to be hot out. So we're dealing with the element of heat already. And travel i.e. movement is um, challenging specifically for vada. So vada is the main focus that we're going to be honing in on is pacifying vada. So you might not even have a lot of vada in your constitution. The more vada you have in your constitution, the more jarring travel is going to be for you, the more ungrounding and challenging it's going to be. But also vada predominance is the dosha of love of travel, movement, new things are exciting, having new experiences, meeting new people, going new places. So this is one of the interesting conundrums of, of Ayurveda. So the people that are most drawn to the things that knock them out of balance are going to be the ones that do it the most. Yeah. So we're going to learn how to pacify Vata. So even if you don't have a lot of Vata in your constitution, you may experience things like constipation or restless sleep when you travel just because travel is so vada elevating so it's it's aggravating to to the vada in us so i'm going to divide up what i'm sharing today into three parts we're going to look at food and digestion part one we're going to look at energy and sleep part two and we're going to look at movement as part three and i'm actually drawing from blogs that i wrote in my blog on my website, heartfeltwellbeing.com in 2019. Okay. So I'm going to be looking down. I have my computer here. I'm going to be looking down at basically my notes from this, these three different blog posts that I wrote in 2019. So you're welcome to check those out. If you just go to the blog 
at heartfeltwellbeing.com. And you can even type in the search bar travel and these three blogs will pop up. So these posts are, are what I'm drawing from, but I'll be adding <laughs> a little more from 2022 here as well. So we're going to look at topic number one, which is food and digestion. Okay, so when we're traveling, we have an opportunity to eat lots of different foods and to, um, to get off schedule too. So we know from the influence of when we understand Ayurveda and living in rhythm. So some of you are newer to this. Some of you, this is like, yeah, it's, it's the way you're already living. What Ayurveda is really all about is rhythm, living in rhythm, living in rhythm with the flow of the energies of the day, living in rhythm with the seasons and living in rhythm with our own life stage. So when we're traveling, we can get out of rhythm really, really quickly. So some things that we want to do in terms of food is we want to stick to a schedule. And that can look different if you're changing time zones, but we want to keep our bodies on track with rhythmically receiving nutrition, not just eating haphazardly all over the place. So the goal of no snacking would continue. And yes, there's lots of opportunities to snack on an airplane. They walk around giving you cookies and pretzels and right. Try to avoid having those things. And what's interesting is, um, when you're traveling, you want to avoid dry, crunchy things. And that's mostly what you'll be served is like chips, crackers, cookies that are crunchy and need a lot of hydration from your system. Well, what's interesting is your system needs a lot more hydration when you're traveling, especially if you're on an airplane. So we want to think about balancing with the wisdom of opposite. So the first thing in terms of balancing from the dry and mobile qualities of vata is to simply stay hydrated. So staying hydrated will help you feel great. When I used to lead backpacking trips, one of my co-leaders would say hydration is the key to happiness. And it really is on a lot of in a lot of ways that if we can stay hydrated, we feel better in general. What I want to point out is that staying hydrated, especially if you're in an airplane or an air conditioned train or boat or something where you're getting a lot of cold air, is that we want to hydrate with warm liquids. So traveling dries us out and we want to hydrate, but we can't absorb and assimilate the hydration, i.e. water, unless it's warm. We want it at least body temperature or warmer to make it easier for our body. So if we're drinking ice beverages, if we're drinking soda, even carbonated water, we're doing a disservice to our bodies who are just trying their best to stay balanced. So we want to have warm beverages, okay? And you can get hot water on a plane or a train <laughs> um, or even in any gas station that you stop at. Of course, if it's a really, really hot day and you're driving across, you know, California or something, you're not going to want to have hot, hot um, liquids. But on an airplane, you can certainly just ask for a cup of hot water. I travel with tea bags. So the next tip is to drink hot ginger tea. Now, this is helpful for hydration. It's helpful for keeping the Agni or your digestive fire strong. And it's also helpful for your immune system. So um, I travel with ginger tea bags in my purse. And sometimes when I'm in a, an airport, I'll go to a restaurant and get a large cup of to go cup of hot water. I also like to travel with my hydro flask, which is a liter of a, it's a double walled um, travel um, water bottle, basically, but you can put hot water in it. And so I'll just take that on the plane with me and sip that throughout my flight. So like a liter is very different from the little cups they'll give you on the on the actual airplane. So travel with ginger tea bags. Yeah. Um, 
and and that tea can cool down and it will still help you it will also help relieve motion sickness or nausea if that's something that you struggle with that ginger ginger tea will help if at all possible packing your own food is really helpful so like on the day when you're leaving home to travel if you can pack your first meal or two with you before you start eating out at restaurants that will help you a ton there's so many variables in in travel so um oh Nikki's asking, what's my favorite ginger tea bag? I like Yogi tea, and I also really love um, Trader Joe's makes a ginger turmeric tea that is is really delicious. So those are my two that I, I travel with, and so I mix it up a little bit. Um, so when you're when you have food from home, so there's already all these variables in your environment when you're traveling, and when you can kind of kind of think of it as an on-ramp into the travel experience instead of like, okay, now you've left home, now you're eating out, now you're, you know, having to pick up food, whatever's available, that your body and mind and spirit are adjusting to traveling and you still get to be nourished by food that was prepared by you, cooked in your kitchen. Um, And so as much as possible, if you can um, take some food with you kind of as an on-ramp on into the travel adjustment for, for your body. You'll be taking care of making sure that you have good nutrition and that you have good food with you when you get hungry because we know that there can we can really get thrown off course if flights get canceled or you know weather pops up or there's all sorts of things. So having food with you is a really great way to make sure your vada stays balanced. And so you can eat at the times that you need to eat. You can eat foods that are really supportive for you. And then when you do eat out, choose foods that are easy to digest in general, especially when you're first beginning a trip. So you might opt for like cooked vegetables over raw vegetables, um, warmer foods, or at least room temperature foods over cold foods, things, things like that. Um, and, and think about minimizing the number of ingredients. So the more ingredients there are in a dish, the more complicated it is for the body to digest and assimilate. In general, like I mentioned before, we want to avoid dry, rough, and cold foods. So these make a big difference when it comes to, um, really supporting the digestion and avoiding constipation. So cold, dry, rough foods make the digestive experience cold, dry, and rough. There you go. So if you want to um, maintain good bowel movements and happy digestion, you want to avoid the chips, the crackers, the popcorn, the cookies, things like that, and focus more on um, foods that are actual meals, so not snack foods, and that are not so rough and dry and cold so even like having a smoothie in the airport probably isn't a very good idea um that is cold and it's made of raw ingredients so back to tea or um, soup i often travel also with the um, dried miso soup packets which are easy to add to, uh, again, a cup of hot water that you can get at a restaurant or a gas station. Um, and, and that can be a little, a little sustenance if you're needing to hold yourself over. Um, so the cold, dry, rough foods not only affect your digestion, but they'll also affect your mind. So they'll make you a little more flighty and spacey and brain foggy. And so that isn't really helpful when you're traveling, (laughs) especially when you're needing to make decisions or things get switched up and you're needing to to change plans and make new decisions. You want to be grounded and well well nourished for that. Um, So some things that you might travel with are baked sweet potatoes. You might make some, um, I made some almond flour bread for our our last trip to Costa Rica and put like um, some nuts and fresh blueberries in it. Um, And and we had that as our, oh, and I brought along a plant-based like cream cheese spread 
Um, and we just had that in the airport on um, for breakfast when we, we had to get to the airport like five o'clock in the morning or something. And so I just brought this loaf of, <laughs> of blueberry nut bread made with almond flour that we could just have in, in the airport. And um, that, that was really, really great. Um, so you can think about things that are uh, easy to, to travel with. Um, things that you can wrap up, you know, you can make, you could make a wrap, you could make, um, you know, roasted root vegetables, things that are, are easy to travel with, but that aren't, um, super messy. That's, that's another thing or stinky. That's the other thing. It's like, um, something like, you know, roasted broccoli. And then you open up the container on the airplane. People are going to be like, Ooh, that, that smells a little stinky. So, um, yeah, you want to be aware of those things too. So, um, and also having things that are made with healthy, beneficial fats like ghee, coconut oil, um, that will help us stay lubricated in our digestive tract and also help feed our brains so that our brains run on fat. And so we want to have that, uh, that sustenance as well. So we want to focus on eating actual meals, not on snacks, even though the culture around you as when you're traveling is snacking, really focus on having a meal and then giving yourself at least three hours before you have another meal. And if you're changing time zones, you want to nourish yourself in, in that pattern. And then as quickly as you can get onto the schedule where you've ended up. Don't be thinking, and this is the same for sleep, which we'll talk about later. Don't be thinking, well, at home, it's four hours earlier. And so really it's blow, like, no, bring yourself into the present and be like, okay, here it's 11 o'clock. I need to go to sleep. Okay. So we want to arrive where we are and be present. It's a good lesson for life in general, right? So back to food, when we look at eating fruits, um, we, uh, in, you know, in general, in Ayurveda, we say avoid mixing fruits in most circumstances. There's certainly um, exceptions to this with other foods. When you're traveling, you know, you're going to be trying new foods. You're going to be um, having opportunities to eat certain things. Focus on just eating fruit first. Fruit digests faster than other foods. So we'll have healthier, happier digestion experiences if we aren't combining fruit or eating fruit after other foods. So um, eat your fruit first and then, then have your other foods. Um, if constipation is a problem for you while you're traveling, I encourage you to um, travel with trifola, which is an Ayurvedic herbal combination of haritaki, bibitaki, and amalaki. If you ever have triplets, you can name them all those names. Um, and those are doshic specific. So uh, haritaki is for vata, uh, amalaki for pitta, and bibitaki is for Kava and that formula is a tridoshic formula, which helps um, nourish and clear out each of the digestive organs of the stomach, small intestine, large intestine. So this can be really helpful to take some, I recommend taking the tablets instead of the powder for your own enjoyability. It does not taste great. Um, and so if you can start with taking two tablets and you can even go up to six or eight tablets at night before you go to bed, drink that with a drink it down with a little bit of water when you wake up in the morning hydrate so you want to drink you know between two to four glasses of warm water if you can maybe adding a little lemon or apple cider vinegar and see if that initiates a bowel movement so trifola can be really helpful when traveling to initiate bowel movement a couple of other things that can be really helpful is um, to take magnesium citrate yeah nikki says we love trifola <laughs> um, so the, um, the magnesium citrate helps um, with um, co the consistency. So it helps soften the, the stool so it doesn't get so hard. You can take both magnesium citrate and trifola if you'd like. You could take magnesium citrate earlier in the day and then the trifola at night. Um, you can find, you know, kind of experiment and see, see what works for you. In general, I really encourage you to minimize sugar, alcohol, and caffeine while you're traveling. All of these things um, 
kind of mess with your mess with your system. <laughs> okay, so these in general are good to avoid. They also decrease immunity when you're traveling, you're exposed to lots of different things. And, you know, right now in this time of like a little resurgence of COVID, why not really support yourself here um, with your immunity? So avoiding eliminating as much as possible sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. Um, and those all stress your body too. So we really want to make sure that the body has the the support that it needs to function optimally and isn't being compromised. I know that's hard. A lot of folks like to, you know, have lots of alcohol on trips or, you know, treats. Um, and that's fine every once in a while, but especially when you're in route somewhere, um, really supporting your yourself is is important. Once you've landed somewhere and maybe you're you're hanging out, you're getting grounded somewhere, that can be a time to be a little more um, lenient with avoiding those, those things. So now let's look at sleep. So sleep is another thing that gets very disrupted with, with travel. Um, and so specifically um, being able to change time zones is a thing, but also when you're traveling and you're taking in new information, you're in unfamiliar environments, our nervous systems can get really wound up. And this again is an imbalance of VADA. All the things that I'm mentioning today are things that you could use anytime, anywhere to balance VADA. It doesn't need to be specifically when you're traveling. And when you're traveling is a time when you really need to pay attention, especially if you have more Vata in your constitution or more Vata imbalance, to really calming Vata down. So in order to sleep, fall asleep, and stay asleep, our nervous systems need to be at a certain level of, of calm. So we're not constantly waking up. There's unfamiliar noises, unfamiliar lights, unfamiliar smells, you know, that we're in in different places that we can actually sleep. So the first thing that I recommend when traveling is to take earplugs and an eye mask. And this is just help. I would just say do this every single night, no matter what, you know. So put in your earplugs, put on your eye mask and let yourself. It's, it creates a sensory deprivation experience so that you are um, able to block out some of the noise, some of the light, um, and, and let yourself relax in that way. So travel with earplugs and an eye mask. Also, rubbing the soles of your feet, especially if you can do that with some sesame oil before you go to sleep, is really, really helpful. This calms the the nervous system and you can imagine like if you're traveling through the day and lots is happening and your feet are like receiving all this information of like where you're traveling right and if we can just and our bodies are kind of receiving and wound up and if we kind of open the portals on the bottom of the feet and just let all that stress and tension come out just a gentle little foot rub with a little bit of sesame oil. You don't need to make your feet super greasy, but just a little oil. In Ayurveda, oil is love. <laughs> so we we oil things um, and, and it's very nourishing, very sweet, very loving to do. So um, oiling the soles of your feet before you go to bed, this will help you sink into deeper sleep and stay asleep. Don't eat within three hours of going to sleep. We don't want to be asking our bodies to digest while we're sleeping. And so if at all possible, make sure you're eating an earlier, lighter dinner, and then you have time to fully digest, and then you're going to sleep. You can also drink warm milk or a milk alternative before you go to bed with a little bit of nutmeg. And if you can, grind up poppy seeds. So I've just been learning about this in my current Ayurveda school that I'm in, that poppy seeds and nutmeg have this very synergistic sleep support um, quality to them. So nutmeg is very supportive of sleep. and um, it takes a while to kick in. So if you're having something kind of in the evening, it can take about four hours to actually activate 
the, the nutmeg. However, poppy seeds help you sleep right away. So if you grind up black poppy seeds, like what we use for cooking, and have some powdered nutmeg, and you put some of those into warm milk, you might add a little bit of honey to that, and drink that. That's a nice little evening beverage that's very grounding and soothing. Again, it's like, you know, the, the love, it's kind of like mother's milk calming, nourishing, and you have that, the poppy seed will help you go to sleep right away. And the nutmeg will kick in and help you stay asleep longer into the night. So again, this is something you could try just at home. You don't have to be traveling. But if you're packing things to take with you to support sleep while you're traveling, this might be something that you want to try. So you can just take a little baggie with, um, with the poppy seeds and nutmeg in it. So um, that's, that's really helpful too. Um, you can also use nausea oil. So nausea oil, this is really helpful for immunity too. So if you just put a drop and you can use any oil really. Um, oh, I took mine home. I usually have oil on my desk here. So you can just put a drop of oil on a pinky, rub your pinkies together, and then put your pinkies up your nose and rub them around. You can also put some oil on and rub it in your ears. So what does this do? It um, moistens and lubricates the mucosal membranes in your nose, in your ears. Nausea is for the nose specifically, but you can use oil in your ears too. So this is helpful for protecting um, you from things intruders coming into the body so this is a great immune system move <laughs> so it makes your nasal hairs more sticky so it can they can um catch things that are coming in so this could be debris like dust or pollen but it could also be viruses and so at the end of the year day of travel if you can blow your nose at least if not neti pot and rinse out your your nasal passage and sinuses, that is really, really helpful for immune support. Um, and, and it can be calming for you to, um, again, putting oil in to, um, to be loving to your body. Um, and then a couple more things. Um, if you wanted to use some more herbal support, you could do tea or tincture and some of the best herbs for that are passion flower chamomile and lemon balm um, and skull cap can also be great so kind of finding again what what works well for you and some people like to take melatonin too so if you are using melatonin i encourage you to take really small doses of melatonin. This can be helpful, especially if you're changing time zones. Um, melatonin is what your body naturally produces. And so it helps with sleep. So it helps your body adjust to, um, especially if you're changing time zones. We want to go to bed. You know, many of you know the doshik clock and we aim to be asleep before 10 p.m. If you're changing time zones, you still want to stick to try to be in bed asleep before 10 p.m in the time zone where you are. And this might be challenging for the first day or two, but if you can strive for that, you will get on track in the time zone that you're in much quicker than if you're like, oh, but at home it's you know, this and I need to sleep in because of this. Try to just get on track with where you are. And so you're not activating the, um, the Pitta energy late um, in the time zone where you are, which means you'll rev back up. So be present in the time zone where you are. All right, I'm running out of time here. The last tip that I want to talk about, or the last category, is movement. And this is um, just something to keep in mind as, as you're traveling. Travel generally tends to involve a lot of sitting, We're either sitting in a car, sitting on a plane, sitting on a boat, sitting, right? We're just sitting. And so it's really important to um, make sure that we're tending to our physical bodies, that we're not just sitting, 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 sitting. And so I just want to encourage you to move. That's basically the tip there. Move your body. So the first tip is just move. Like listen to what your body needs. How does it want to move? Do you want to do some hip openers? Do you want to dance around? Do you want to shake? Do you, you know, are you in a place where you can roll around on the floor, hug your knees to your chest, things like that? 
any movement is helpful. Some other tips to think about are to reverse your position. So if you're sitting um, all day long and your body is in, you know, if this is your upper body and this is your lower body and your legs, if this is the position that you're in all day long, you want to reverse that position. So we want to straighten and maybe even lean back a little bit. So doing some, you know, standing up and doing some little back bends, opening through the shoulders. Um, again, this is helpful whether you're traveling or not. If you're sitting a lot, you can do these things. Very helpful. And when you're traveling, it's, it can be really, really helpful. So I really find that doing some hip movements too, even if it's just like swishing my hips side to side, like standing in an airport um, and doing twists too, like swinging arms around side to side, even seated twists can be really helpful. So we wanna think about moving the body in directions that it's not moving in already. So twists, forward folds, heart openers, joint rotations, hip openers, back stretches, and side body stretches. So even, you know, doing some stretching side to side, reaching your arm above your head can be really, really helpful. And then the final thing I want to say about movement is that breathing is so important. When we're traveling, we can tend to breathe very shallowly for long periods of time. And that ends up being really detrimental to our whole system, every everything. So when you get a chance and you feel comfortable breathing deeply, see if you can, you know, when you're at a rest area or in between flights or, you know, to make a point to really take some deep breaths and specifically to lengthen your exhale. So really squeeze all that air out. And the exhale is where you're gonna calm your nervous system even more. So those are my little travel tips. I'd love to hear what you have found that works for you. I'd love to receive any questions that you have. Additionally, I hope this has been really helpful and I'm curious to hear too, if anybody wants to type in the chat, what one or two things are you taking away from what I shared today that you are gonna put into practice when you travel next? So let me know what you are going to add. All right. Hope that was helpful. We'll be back next week with more inspiring information here. And I'm really glad to be learning and growing with you all as we continue on our journey here. All right. Take care. See you soon. Be well.